Conic Sections, Constructing the Parabola. In this video, we start with a verbal description of what a parabola is. We use that description to construct a parabola, and then, based on that, we derive the equation of a parabola. Finally, we consider the effect of using a vertical line for the directrix rather than a horizontal line. In the next video, we will use these equations to graph example parabolas. To construct a parabola, we need a straight line called a directrix and a point not on the line called a focus. The parabola consists of all the points that are the same distance from the directrix that they are from the focus. I have a compass set for about an inch and a quarter, roughly, and I'm going to use this to draw a straight line parallel to the directrix about an inch and a quarter away from the directrix. Then I'm going to use the compass still set for the same distance Put the point of the compass on the focus and draw an arc of points that are about an inch and a quarter away from the focus, the same distance that we used for the directrix. Where the arc crosses the line, you find a point that is the same distance from the focus as it is from the directrix. I have two of these points. Each one is the same distance away from the focus as it is away from the directrix. Now I'm going to do it again with the compass set for a larger distance. We have a line parallel to the directrix that shows all the points that are the same distance from the directrix. And then with the point of the compass on the focus, I draw arcs of points that are that same distance from the focus. Where the line crosses the arc, we have a point. There's two of these points. For each one of these points, the point is the same distance from the focus that it is from the directrix. We set the compass for an even larger distance, and we repeat this again, finding two points that are each the same distance away from the directrix that they are from the focus. Now I'm going to measure the distance between the focus and the directrix. It turns out to be two inches. And find a point exactly in the middle, one inch from the directrix, one inch from the focus. This point is called the vertex of the parabola. Next, I'm going to set the compass for exactly the distance between the directrix and the focus, so in this case, two inches, and draw a line like all the other lines parallel to the directrix, only this one runs through the focus. Then I draw arcs of points that are two inches away from the focus, and I find two more points on the parabola. Now that we have all these points, the next thing to do is to sketch a parabola through the points. If I'm going to write an equation for my parabola, I'm going to need coordinates for all these points, and that means I need a coordinate system. I run an x-axis horizontally through the vertex, and a y-axis vertically through the vertex, so we have the vertex at the origin of the coordinate system, and we have x and y axes that will allow us to find coordinates for all of our points. I'm going to call the distance between the focus and the vertex p. p stands for parabola. So that gives the focus coordinates x equals 0, y equals p. The vertex is exactly in the middle between the focus and the directrix. So if it's p spaces away from the focus, it must also be p spaces away from the directrix. So the directrix is a horizontal line p spaces below the x-axis. That gives it the equation y equals negative p. Now let's look at this point that's on the horizontal line that runs through the focus. It's 2p spaces above the directrix, so it must be 2p spaces out from the focus. There's another one on the other side with the same distance 2p from the directrix and 2p from the focus. The segment that runs between these points is called the lattice rectum. Lattice, lateral, means to the side, and rectum, right, refers to the right angle between the lattice rectum and the y-axis. The point at the right end of the lattice rectum has an x-coordinate of 2p and a y-coordinate of p. The point at the left end has an x-coordinate of negative 2p and a y-coordinate of p. Notice the parabola is symmetric about the y-axis. If you fold the paper on the y-axis, one side of the parabola will line up perfectly with the other side. That means the y-axis is the axis of symmetry for this parabola. We can find any arbitrary point on this parabola. I'm going to take one five inches up from the directrix and check and discover that it is exactly that same distance, in this case five inches, away from the focus. No matter what point you look at on the parabola, the distance between that point and the directrix is always the same as the distance between that point and the focus. That's true for any point x, y, anywhere on the parabola. So our parabola has a directrix, a line, 
and we've determined the equation is y equals negative p. It has a focus, a point, with coordinates 0, p. And then for each point on the parabola with coordinates x, y, the distance between the point and the directrix. What is the distance between the point and the directrix? Well, the directrix is a horizontal line, and you measure distance from a line perpendicular to the line. So we need the vertical distance between the point and the directrix. For the vertical distance, we look to the y-coordinates. The y-coordinate at the point is y. The y-coordinate on the line is negative p. For the distance between them, we subtract y minus negative p, or y plus p. Our point is y spaces above the x-axis. The directrix is p spaces below the x-axis. And so the point and the directrix are y plus p spaces apart. And that has to be equal to the distance between the point and the focus. Well, the focus is a point, so this is the distance between two points. And for that, we use our distance formula. The distance between the two points is the square root of the difference in the x-coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. So that gives us an equation. y plus p equals the square root of x squared plus y minus p quantity squared. That is the equation of a parabola, but it's not in a particularly nice form. To put it in a nicer form, we'd like to get rid of that radical. So we square both sides, and then I'm going to multiply out the squares. On the left, that gives me y squared plus 2py plus p squared. And on the right, we have x squared plus y squared minus 2py plus p squared. A lot of things cancel here. We've got y squareds on both sides. We've got p squared on both sides. We cancel those out. And we're left with 2py equals x squared minus 2py. The 2py doesn't cancel because the signs aren't the same. Positive 2py on the left and negative 2py on the right. But we can bring those together on the same side of the equal sign, and we're left with 4py equals x squared. This is the equation of a parabola with a vertex at the origin. If you want to put the vertex somewhere else, the equation is 4p times the quantity y minus k equals the quantity x minus h squared. And that gives us a parabola with a vertex at the point hk. For a parabola with vertex hk, this gives us the equation x minus h quantity squared equals 4p times the quantity y minus k. This parabola has a horizontal directrix, has a focus that's some point not on the directrix, has a vertex midway between the focus and the directrix, and then we can find the ends of the lattice rectum by going the same distance to either side of the focus that the focus is away from the directrix. From this, we can draw a parabola, and we note the distance p is how far the focus is above the vertex. This has a positive value of p. For a negative value of p, we draw a very similar diagram. We still have a directrix, we still have a focus that's a point not on the directrix, but now it's below the directrix instead of above. The vertex is still midway between the focus and the directrix, and the ends of the lattice rectum are still the same distance to either side of the focus that the focus is away from the directrix. This allows us to draw a parabola that opens downward. P, as I said earlier, is the distance that the focus is above the vertex. If the focus is below the vertex, p is a negative number. So this is what the parabola looks like with a negative value of p. In the previous sketch, we drew a parabola with a horizontal directrix. The directrix can also be a vertical line. The focus is some point that's not on the directrix, and the vertex is midway between the directrix and the focus. Then, as before, we draw a line parallel to the directrix some distance away from it, and that same distance away from the focus, we make an arc. Where the arc crosses the line, we get a point. That point is the same distance from the directrix that it is from the focus. We make several points like this, and these points give us our parabola. One line we can draw parallel to the directrix runs through the focus. The distance between points on this line and the directrix is the same as the distance between the directrix and the focus. We draw an arc that same distance out from the focus. Where the arc crosses the line, we have another point on the parabola. Running a curve through these points gives us our parabola. We put a coordinate system on our parabola with the origin of the coordinate system at the vertex of the parabola 
just like last time. This allows us to give each point coordinates, x, y. The focus, p spaces to the right of the origin, has coordinates p0. The directrix, p spaces to the left of the origin, has the equation x equals negative p. From this we can write an equation. The distance between the point x, y and the directrix equals the distance between that same point and the focus. The distance between the point and the directrix is horizontal, so we use the x coordinates. The point is x spaces to the right of the y axis. The directrix is p spaces to the left of the y axis, so the total distance between the directrix and the point is x plus p. The distance between the point and the focus can be found using the distance formula since those are both points. We take the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference in the x coordinates and the difference in the y coordinates. We can neaten that using algebra just as we did before to get the equation 4px equals y squared. That is the equation of a parabola with its vertex at the origin. If we want to put the vertex somewhere else, we have 4p times the quantity x minus h equals the quantity y minus k squared. That puts the vertex at hk. This parabola will open to the right. When the square is on the y, the parabola opens to the side, and when the square is on the x, as it was in the previous example, the parabola opens up or down. Now we come back to the page where we summarized the equations, and we see that for the vertical directrix, the equation is y minus k quantity squared equals 4p times the quantity x minus h. We have a vertical line as our directrix. The focus is some point not on the directrix. In this sketch, I'm taking the focus to the right of the directrix. The vertex is midway between the focus and the directrix, and the ends of the lattice rectum are the same distance above and below the focus as the focus is away from the directrix. This allows us to draw our parabola, and we have the distance p is the distance the focus is to the right of the vertex. This uses a positive value of p. For a negative value of p, we still draw the vertical directrix, but now we put the focus to the left of the directrix instead of the right. The vertex is still midway between the focus and the directrix, and the ends of the lattice rectum are still above and below the focus by the same distance that the focus is away from the directrix. This allows us to draw a parabola, and we have the distance p. As I said earlier, p is the distance that the focus is to the right of the vertex. If the focus is to the left of the vertex, then we have a negative value of p. This allows the same basic form of the equation to describe parabolas that open up, down, right, or left. On the top half of the page, where the square is on the x-coordinate, the parabola opens up or down. In those cases, the parabola is a function. In the bottom of the page, the square is on the y, and the parabola opens to the left or to the right. In those cases, the parabola does not represent a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. In the next video, we will use this equation to graph some example parabolas, one each for the four orientations.